Now put your hands together and bring out our third and final group, Generation Gap! <laughs> time so far. All right. Well, we are Generation Gap. I am Mike Ferris. I'm Harrison George. I'm Julie Miller. And I am their dad. <laughs> Actually, DNA tests have been run. I am not really their father. I am their grandfather. I now we know. Now guys we know. old. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys. Thank you everybody for coming out very much. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to put on a great show for you. What we're going to need to get started is a location. Some place people can gather, whether it be work, play, other ones. Well, all right, let's... Church! Rooftop. All right, rooftop apparently is a popular, popular <laughs> suggestion. So rooftop it is. Everybody, for the first and final time, Generation Gap is proud to present to you the rooftop. Trust me, when the fireworks start, you see them all from here perfectly. It's beautiful. It's just, it's been about 45 minutes. They're waiting till the sun is completely down and the sky is totally dark. Trust me. It's dark. It should be any minute now. Daniel, it's dark. It's not going to get darker. This is dark. The darkest. <laughs> They could be waiting for some of those people out in the back to turn their headlights off. <laughs> Daniel, I think we should just go home. I don't think they're going to do it this year. Oh, do not puss out on me, George! <laughs> I'm not pussing out. I'm do going home. Do not puss out on me, puss puss! I'm not puss, pussing puss, out! Puss puss! Meow! Oh. Who's pussing out on me like no. a little pussycat? You say George the pussycat, oh. that's who. Daniel! I'm not pussing out. I'm saying no, Daniel, this is a bad idea. That's what I'm saying. Every idea you have is bad, and I'm not pussing out. I'm saying this is a bad idea. Dude, bad idea? Where else are you going to have this kind of view of the spectacular fireworks show that I swear to God is going to begin any freaking second? <laughs> On June 30th. Daniel. I, they start early here in the South. It's not Christmas. It's, it's Alabama. Not like Meanwhile, a couple rooftops over. It seems some people are uh, having difficulty with maintenance. How's it going? It's pretty good. I almost got the hole completely drilled through. <coughs> 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 See the top of your head. I see a big bald spot. Is that you, guy? Yeah, I'm using Rogaine. Freaking rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming along, I swear. I can barely see my reflection in it. All right, enough of that, smartass. Just run the conduit down there. All right. I'm, I'm, bring, I'm letting it down to you. Slowly. Ooh, a bird. Ow! <laughs> I can I can fix this. I can fix this. What the what what's going on? Oh, Mr. Dartopolis! <laughs> you idiots have been up here for two hours. Oh well, uh, you know I just uh, I thought one thing that our rental home could use is a giant hole in the roof. Here, take the other end of the conduit I'm putting up there and grab a hold of it. We gotta get this done before that dickhead Dartopolis gets here. <laughs> We're talking 
about another Dartopolis. Uh, Mr. Dartopolis, as you know, as I know, a common problem in the housing of this neighborhood is, is air resistance. So often the winds come swooping in, and it's like, oh, we just can't get any aerodynamicness. Of course, yes. <laughs> Because I love racing my building. <laughs> well, Mr. Dartopolis, if that is the case, you are going to love the stripe and the number eight I put down the side of this building. <laughs> I just want you guys to fix the floor, just the ground level. Don't worry about putting in holes. Don't worry about stripes. Just make this safe. I can't have any more residents falling through. How would you feel... Theoretically, about basement pools. A basement pool. Yeah, uh, it would theoretically be great if you know if we just got a hose down there and turned it on for a day or six. Is there is there a basement pool already? <laughs> This is my garden. I planted it myself. <laughs> Over here, I've got some herbs. That's basil. <laughs> I named my herbs, too. I bet you thought that was basil. No, it's basil. I named him after John Cleese's character on Faulty Towers. <laughs> Yeah. When Nats.com said you had your own greenhouse, I didn't think it'd be on a rooftop. That's Luigi. He's oregano. <laughs> so? I can tell you're excited. I sure am. Just, I mean, you locked the door behind me. I just didn't know why you did that. That's for safety. Uh. Because... When you're going back down the stairs, when you've been out here and the bright light from the sun, which is reflected from this aluminum coating that I have to reflect the heat because it's energy efficient, and the sudden change in ambient light as you go down the hallway, you can fall down the stairs! So I'm thinking of you. No one has ever said that to me before. I think you are the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Well, you know, I try. Oh. I was going to cook dinner for us later, too, and that's why I wanted to introduce you to Basil and Luigi, because they're going to be seasoning your spaghetti. <laughs> When I see that pasta on the shelf, I just go out there and I get it! Oh, yeah! And I bring it back home, and I get a big kettle full of boiling water, and I just throw it in there to go, <laughs> Like a lobster. This is the most... This is the most thrilling thing I've ever been a part of in my entire life! It's like erotica! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's some danger afoot on top of a very tall building. I got him covered from here. No sign of the target yet. 
But when he crosses that threshold, by God, I'll have a beat on him. Oh, I'm, I'm getting so sick of it. Every morning we wake up to the same damn thing, Dave. Every day it's destruction and despair. And that fucker gets our newspaper every morning! <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today, by God. I want to read about death and destruction. And if I don't have my Kansas City Star, where am I going to find out about those depressing things? Well, I'll tell you what's going to be the headline in the Star tomorrow. <laughs> One dead newspaper stealing fucking door! That's what's going to be the headline! <laughs> now, Dave, while we're up here, I got something to ask you. That, that dog next door ever keep you up in the middle of the night? I don't like where this conversation's going. I'm just saying, I need my beauty sleep. Look, the dog next door, all right, that's a non-combatant. <laughs> there are rules of engagement, all right? All right? You didn't seem to have a problem taking out non-combatants when it was a cat in heat on the fence outside your window. Cats are nothing. Cats aren't real. Cats are less than animals. <laughs> They're filth. They're like insects. They're like bugs. But dogs, dogs are different, man. You just, you engage the ones that engage you first. All right? You don't, you don't take out innocent dogs. Well, because what if I were to tell you that Mr. Periwinkle it once urinated on your petunias. Man, it's gonna take more than that to rile me. <laughs> you know what? Dog's gotta go, all right? A dog's gotta go where a dog's gotta go. And sometimes, if it's on your petunias, that's the price of war, man. That's the price of war. <laughs> what if I told you that Mr. Periwinkle had urinated on your Daffodils? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he urinated on your daffodils. Look, that's enough, man, that's enough. Oh, you went digging around. He was looking me right in the eye. He was saying, hey there, hey there, Sarge. I know what I'm doing. I'm making a conscious decision. <laughs> <Stop. Really good. laughs> Meanwhile, the war wages on on June 30th. Daniel. I just don't want to hang out with you anymore, man. Look, all right, I, I understand what the problem was, all right? I checked with the weather service. There was a red flag warning because it was been so dry. That's why they didn't shoot the show last night, okay? But I've had my sprinklers on all day. <laughs> We're at the hardware store. I got a, a 300 foot sections of hose. I got sprinklers all around the perimeter. It's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. None of what you said is going to make any difference, Daniel. You have no effect over the weather. You can't change. You can't change anything. Meow, 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 meow. Georgie's pussing out. Meow, meow. Play the game. Play the game, Daniel. You're just gonna keep getting me riled up. That's how you keep me up here. It's by pissing me off. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna leave, and you're gonna stay here for six more hours and drink that shitty Quick Trip coffee, and I'm gonna go home and eat dinner. Man, this is Colombian roast. Don't be dissing on the Quick Trip coffee, man. <laughs> Goodbye, okay? if you were the craziest person I know. But to live in a city of crazy people is too much. Is oh. every holiday going to be a week long now? Oh, oh, we're crazy, right? Yeah, because you live in a city of patriots, oh. huh? Oh, we're crazy because we love our country. Yeah, well, you know what? If you don't love it, you leave it, huh? Yeah, why don't you just go? Why don't you just go with your, your hippie friends and your protests? And, uh, yeah, why don't you just go and, and, and you know, freaking save a 
tree! No! No, I'm sick of this kind of argument. I want to stay in a country where we celebrate our holidays on the day. And we'll stay here and defend it. Holy shit, you guys! It's midnight! That means it's July 31st! Oh. Oh. <laughs> and it takes away from all of the holiday. Just if you celebrate every day as a holiday, then there are no holidays. It's like when they tell you to live every day like it's the last day of your life. Then it's every day again! <laughs> Independence from tyrannical powers and freedom and liberty to, to fulfill your own destiny. You know what? Those are things that you can't just cram into one day, man. And how do you cram it? You idiots, you get together and buy fireworks and blow stuff up and shoot at cats. Because we have the freedom to do that. <laughs> what if George Washington was alive? He He's a quiet teeth and say, oh, give me an M80. That's what he'd say? Hell yeah! He'd have the sparklers and everything! And Betsy Ross would be wearing a bra with sparklers on it and she'd be like, yeah! Go daddy, go daddy! So wrong! You guys are the unpatriotic ones. I'm the one that loves this country. I like order and rules. That's what America's about. Laws! You're talking about madness! I think we have found our sacrificial body for this year! What? I said even part of the holiday! I think we found Mr. Big Government. Oh, yeah. You want a score and seven Jesus. years ago. What? This Lincoln impersonator said sacrifice the infidel. <laughs> Great, got a fat Lincoln on your side. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> on another building, things are starting to speed up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What did you do to my building? Mr. Darbleton Bill? <laughs> in my building. What is all this? There's tail fins and flags and... What? Have you ever been to Memphis? <laughs> I recently ventured there, and whilst visiting, I stopped by Graceland. And I thought to myself, that king, he knew how to live. So, well, the first thing I did was, uh, well, the first thing was I made a Twinkie hot dog sandwich in honor of the king. Second thing I did was I said, everything needs to be neon. And Mr. Dartopolis is really going to appreciate that. Because he's a cool guy. He's a cool landlord that you would just invite over and not yell inopportune things while he's over. Hey, I just looked up. Uh, on the business card, I think his name is Dartopolis. Yeah, you better hurry up and get off the roof. That asshole's definitely coming up there, I think. The guy needs to get fired. He, he took classes on making things awkward, I tell you. I don't want all these neon lights. This is going to cost a fortune to keep plugged in all day. And what if it rains? Isn't it going to set a fire or something? Well, I mean, just because there's been a red warning because of the dryness, and we've got nine things plugged into sockets, and this wire's fraying a little bit, and I've started a bonfire in the living room. <laughs> I see nothing about that set of situations that says that there's going to be a fire. Nothing. Nothing. How about this pile of oily rags? <laughs> Let's talk about the oily rags. It's, it's a proven fact that oily rags up the resale value. <laughs> This is a death trap. I turned my home into a death trap. Oh no, the death trap's actually in the dining room. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm paying you guys. You guys are literally the worst. I don't know if that's the right time to use literally. I get confused. Is that, would that be appropriate? Uh, you guys are the absolute worst. That'll work. Literally, you are the worst. <laughs> Dude, he is like literally gonna be here any fuck. Oh. 
So. <laughs> he knows. Yeah, he knows I'm here now. Yeah. Maybe he'll stop yelling inopportune things. I just want you guys to get your shit off my roof. Just get it back to normal. Take your rags. Take your Elvis posters. Take these neon lights. Take this Christmas decoration. That's highly inappropriate. Not even close to Christmas. We celebrate year round. <laughs> like the Christmas, yeah, right. That's just right. like the calendar scene. Yeah. Okay, all right. I understand that you have not exactly been pleased by the renovations we have made home, made to your home just yet. However, do you see this bust over here? I didn't notice that. That's right. What would you say if I said that this flipped up and there was a little button underneath? <laughs> you mean like on Batman? <laughs> Maybe. What? And what would you say if I said once you pressed that button, the bookshelf slid to the side and there were some poles? Like Fireman Half? Like Fireman Half. That's right. That's right. So you're saying, hypothetically, that if I were to walk over there and move his head and then push a button and then their poles would come, and then I could slide down them whenever I wanted. But where would the poles go? There is a secret cave. Now, in that secret cave, <laughs> theoretically, <laughs> giant coin, <laughs> dinosaur, <laughs> playing cards. <laughs> what would you say if I told you that were the case? Question. Is the bat cave already built? <laughs> I wonder how their date is going. Ah, uh, I'm sure the key will turn up. <laughs> In the meantime, I would like to ask you to maybe uh, cool your jets <laughs> so I can better search for it. Huh. Some bird took the key. Are it you... just came up and took it right from my hand. <laughs> you have the key? Yeah. And a bird took the key? <laughs> ah, you know, all birds like to hang out over by my herb garden. <laughs> so uh, maybe they'll come back and bring the key. Ah, uh, Julie? Yes, guy. Uh, 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 I really am enjoying our date. Me too. But you know, uh, I think that um, <clears throat> it's going a little faster than I feel comfortable with. I love to let my freak flag fly. <laughs> so you're a freak I just, girl. <laughs> I just figure, why not put it out there on a first date so we get everything out in the open, and why not on a large rooftop with some grass? <laughs> My mother said. <laughs> Putting it out there on the first date. I think that's what she said, it was like that, is uh, uh, not what good boys do, and it's not what good girls do. And I'm sure you're a good girl, aren't I am. you? Yes, of course I am. That's right. Uh, uh, everything on our... <laughs> on our match.com questionnaire uh, thing led me to believe that you are a good girl. <laughs> oh, see, for instance, I see you do definitely have a way with animals. I'm like, no. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, like Disney movies, wholesome, sweet family entertainment, the, these are the aspects of your personality that... I was uh, drawn to. Yeah. And all I said is I wanted the man. <laughs> uh, did that bird just go back down the stairs? <laughs> this is all in your imagination. This is all not happening right now. Yeah. I'm having one of those lucid dreams. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. I saw something about this on the Discovery Channel. 
Oh, I'm having one of those lucid dreams, and I think there's going to be a little bit of sex in it. <laughs> the battle rages on for the neighborhood, but things have taken a dark twist. Okay, Daniel. Oh, my God. Daniel. Oh, God. Oh. I was ambushed. <laughs> There was, a, there was a chocolate lab, a Rottweiler, and I think there was a freaking shih tzu in there. I told you, it's that terrible Mr. Periwinkle. He's rallied the neighborhood dogs. You're right. All on the behalf of the guy who likes to steal our newspapers. But the dog's a menace. Now you see how it is. Man's best friend? No. Man's most mortal enemy. <laughs> I'm sorry I doubted you. Damn right you're sorry you doubted me. I, I couldn't help it. I, I thought he was innocent. I thought he was one of the good ones. When they look at you with those eyebrows, <laughs> they seem so empathetic. That they do. They, their biggest strength is the fact that they can simulate love. But it's not true love. <laughs> he played me, man. He played me. Play me like a dime store guitar. There is a reason that dogs are called nature's con artists. <laughs> I wish I watched Animal Planet like you. You know all these things. That's right. So you know what? You know what my plan is? You know what my plan is? Tell me. Now on here, the commanding officer. Damn right. That's why they call me Sarge. Now, I've just been calling myself that, but I was hoping it would catch on. <laughs> Sarge, I'm ready to hear what you have to say, sir. That, that makes me feel warm and fuzzy hearing that from you. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Nature's number one combatant of dog. You know what that is? Uh, Wolverine? Wolverine might be taking the problem in the other direction. <laughs> because then we have rabid Wolverines wandering the neighborhood. <laughs> Plus, and there's the whole fact that they're not indigenous to this area. Which <laughs> It would desperately, desperately disrupt the ecosystem. <laughs> like right after I said Wolverine, I kind of hoped deep down inside that I was wrong. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. A dog's number one worst enemy. School buses. <laughs> I was going to say animal control officer, and I would have been wrong again. I like your answer. I'm glad you didn't say that, because I didn't want to think you were stupid. <laughs> Shoot! It's July! School's out! What are we gonna do? What? Oh, good Lord. Sarge! I think they're coming! I think they've breached the perimeter, Sarge! Can, can dogs climb stairs? These are some pretty smart damn dogs they've been getting our newspaper for the past six months! Oh, Lordy! Okay, alright, that's okay! What we're just gonna have to do is we're gonna have to rent several party buses. We're gonna go down to Power and Light. We're gonna just tell them that we're sexy girls that want to take our shirts off. We can call the Strip. Yeah, the Strip trolleys. That's they right. go everywhere. They go to Westport. They go to Power and Light. They even go down to Waldo. Yeah. That's right. We will set up a hot happening hotspot so there's buses running all around this place. We'll run the dogs over and we can go on a pub crawl. Woo! We're gonna get fucked up tonight! We got it, Sarge! the money, which I have here, but more importantly, I told you about the belt. The belt. Would you please put your hands together and welcome up the other members of Gamma Ray. Hold the balance up. Hold the balance up. Get your balance out. Everybody get your balance in the air. Can I have two people jumping around moving behind me? Keep moving, 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 moving. Freeze! Can I get a suggestion? Pineapple. 
Pineapple, tear off your strips. Let's get ready to vote pineapple. Go. Punch it now. Punch the tree. <laughs> We've been at this for hours. Can't we just get a ladder? Boost me. <laughs> I always wanted you to give me a piggyback ride. There we go. Oh, come on. Uh, all right. We are going to beat those Reese. eight. <laughs> Seriously? Please. <laughs> Swordfish. Tiger shark. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Monkey wrench. Magnum. <laughs> but I'm super ketchup man. Well, you're nothing for Captain Relish. <laughs> Damn you and your super fast ketchup reflex. Way to go, super ketchup man. <laughs> Now I'll spray him down with mustard, or my name ain't the Mustard Kid. Hey, you can be the finisher. All right. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, Mustard Kid. You're the slowest. Ah! <laughs> I panicked. I've never finished a guy before. Well, what was it? Okay, that, oh, what the? <laughs> Five seconds, go, go! Oh my god! Hey, yeah. Oh, son of a... What? <laughs> now I had you play hide and freaking see! You see it first! You see it first! Put your hand back on your head! Okay. <laughs> that wasn't what I was thinking. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking! I'm walking! I'm walking! <laughs> Why? Because you were walking! Uh, well, I, I can't marry you, I'm sorry. Oh, what a bummer. Oh, man. If it was in any other state, maybe. Uh, but this is Missouri. Well, we can't do that yeah. here. I'll just pass Missouri's in. Fuck yeah. Yes! <laughs> again, one round of applause for the audience again. I mean, without. I, I have seen this event grow through the last three years, but this has been the strongest set I, I personally believe I've seen. Um, you guys have been treated to something great, so let, for the performers, everyone.
Thunderdome champions for season six, Generation Day.